Well, here we go. Picks in advance for game number two. Samsung versus SK Telecom T1. And Lissandra Fizz, the first bands, of course, not wanting to let Bliss have that Fizz. Bliss is Fizz. That's a little bit of a, a little bit of a tough one. And Zareth Band. Okay, good. So that means we won't see it blind picked. Thank you, Samsung. I appreciate that. <laughs> I feel like that actually does help out SK Telecom more than it does Samsung. So same bands this yeah. time, even though SKT T1 will be on the red side. Meanwhile, no need to ban the LeBlanc against DZ Hoon. Certainly yeah. not a signature champion for him. Instead, they go for arguably DZ Hoon's, or one of, I should say, his best champions in Zareth. Yeah. He has been very impressive. And the Janna pick. Now, uh, interestingly enough, speaking about Easy Hoon's champions, Syndra did take a little bit of a hit with her early Q damage. Quite a quite a big hit, actually. And so, will that really affect you know how often we're going to see her? I don't know. The, the utility is still there. The accuracy, I guess you could say, or the she'll how would you describe that as far as the uh, scatter the meek scatter the hitting, scatter, scatter the, the weak the weak. Call the meek. Scatter, scatter the, the weak. Scatter the weak. I know. I it confuses remember. it confuses me every oh, time. Oh, Rito, please, <laughs> you're doing to us. Either way, that got slightly nerfed, quote unquote, by making the. Uh, Hitbox is a bit more quote unquote accurate, quote unquote, quote unquote. I feel if you're a good Syndra player, sure, she's not going to have the, the same level of bullying, which was perhaps excessive. Perhaps. Uh, but for the good Syndra players, using Scatter the Weak should still be simple enough. And Quirky Jarvin, possibly yeah. the takeaways right here. I think that's pretty darn good. I would say so. Waiting, though. Do they really want the Corky? Yeah, I think you do. Would not be bad at all to keep that away from Samsung. Of course, some slight nerfs to NAR's lane dominance in this patch by yeah. changing the cooldown refund on the boomerang. So he's not quite so easy to harass with in this new patch and should provide a little bit of respite for some of these other top laners that have to go into a 1v1 against him. Yeah. What is Samsung going to go for here? Now, uh, Corky also has a more expensive Valkyrie, but unless you're spamming it, I don't think that's really going to yeah, matter. Yeah, probably not the uh, biggest change in the world. No. They could take away the Kassadin. Wouldn't be a bad takeaway. Kassadin did fall all the way through the draft in our last game, something that we don't see very frequently. Yeah here in Korean League of Legends, considering it is such a very good flex pick. And I I would I would assume SK Telecom will take that if it's still available in the second round of the draft, because they do have last pick, so they can decide where it goes. Rengar's still available as well, too, but it looks like Bliss is going to lock in that Lee Sin for Eve. And Eve grabbing the Syndra. Sivir. Sivir. Yeah, and it's some. So pretty solid pick ban phase for both teams so far. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Going for that bully lane. SK Telecom may opt to lane swap right here, something that hasn't been Samsung's strength. They just don't have the professional experience, sometimes making mistakes and setting some of their players a little bit too far behind. Looking at the Nami as a possible disengage tool from the Sivir ult at the moment. That's well, certainly a good one. Marin a conversation with the coach and then relaying some instructions into his microphone he's like yeah just what would faker pick what would faker do tell me i think cassadin is perfectly fine here but oh, they're going to the actually NAR. take the nar all right narvin incoming or ah, maokai Mal switching it at the yeah. last second he did have a great game on maokai last time it certainly did Nothing wrong at all with that. You know, we've seen his NAR. It's, it's been a bit lackluster. I think the Maokai is a much more solid pickup. Well, and the you, Nami if, locked in as well. If you pick the Kassadin in there too, I suppose the danger is that having not seen either of the solo laners, there's a possibility that they pick two counters to Kassadin, so at least they get one winning matchup. Right. But Kassadin could be safely last picked here. Kassadin could also be taken by Samsung and put into the top lane against the Maokai. Of course, you can be pretty safe in that matchup, and I think that's what they're going to do. Just get it, spamming the Q to get that shield. Ooh, wow, blind big rise say. would be a little bit dodgy. Yeah. LeBlanc 
All right. A very safe choice for Bliss in the mid lane. I think this is a good draft so far from Samsung. Yeah, it just doesn't provide a lot of uh, countering options for SK Telecom, aside from a possible lane swap. Question is, can Bliss play LeBlanc? Obviously a challenging champion mechanically, and a big Ooh. change from his Morgana in the last game, a Zed possibly coming in. That is not a very easy Hoon style champion. I was gonna say, speaking yeah. of big changes. Yeah. Play the Vagar. Oh, that's please. what I want to see. Please. Oh, that would be so cool. And you know, I mean, if you can predict where LeBlanc is gonna go, or even if you're not totally predicting it, you can you can actually hurt LeBlanc pretty badly with this Vagar. You can see Koma gesturing furiously. It's like, quick, quick, go to Jace. Yeah. That out of the champions we've seen so far, Jace certainly a comfort pick for Easy Hoon. Unfortunately, it makes a bit more sense than the uh, Fagar, but oh well. I can dream, can't I? I don't have to be a little bit worried about LeBlanc all ins all the same. Getting a lot of poke damage and with those skill shots that Jace has, can be a bit difficult to trade. Yeah. But for the most part, should be pretty farm oriented lane. And they've got great poke, huge mid-game power spike for SK Telecom. Once Jace stacks up that tier and Corky gets the T-Force and the Sork Shoes, they will be in a great position to siege. Well, it's interesting. I mean, last game we saw SK Telecom kind of take a backseat to the aggression department, you know, just kind of sit back, wait to build up that strength. But this game, they've got a very definite time where they're going to be trying to put their dominance out on the map. Right, and of course the issue will be Samsung has these two backline assassins in Cassidy and LeBlanc. If they can get onto Easy Hoon and Bang in the late game, there's not going to be a lot SK Telecom's going to be able to do. Of yeah. course, with that power spike, I assume SK Telecom will be able to get a number of turrets and put them down a lot of pressure and take control over the Dragon Pit. But it's about Samsung. If they can arrive in the late game without too much of a deficit, they're going to be really well positioned to hunt down Easy Hood and Bang with the Sipper Ultimate. All right, here we go, guys. Game two, can Samsung tie it up, or does SKT get the 2-0? Let's get in the game and find out. I feel like at the end of that, just pop up and say Chick-fil-A. <laughs> <laughs> I like how, you know, now that Faker doesn't have to play, he can just stand around in the room of falling feathers. That's right. The room of fallen feathers. Wow, if that doesn't sound like a kung fu movie title, I don't know what does, man. I don't know what does. Best kung fu movie title ever. Let's get Telecom versus Samsung. Welcome once again to this happy little place we call Summoner's Rift, or just Rift, since there's no more summoners. <laughs> Now just an anachronism. Yep. Bliss taunting Easy Hoot mercilessly with the W. That's how you do, you BM people with the yeah. W. Like, I'm right, here, I'm right here, I'm right here. The question is, is SKT going to lane swap out of this pretty horrible Sivir Jana lane that will be able to abuse them with uh, the long range poke early on? Yeah. Fury, bang, bang. Gonna get hit right there, a couple autos. Ooh, they get the ward as well. Wow, they did. Taking that one out. Yep. Inside the brush, so no vision in try early on for SK Telecom. They are going to recall, but it looks like we will not have a lane swap. I mean, Kassadin should do pretty well here against the Maokai also. Huh. I don't know about this. This does seem like SK Telecom, especially since we know Samsung is a little bit shaky in the lane swap. This seems a little bit lazy from them. I don't really see a reason why you wouldn't lane swap if you're SKT in this situation. It's a bit cocky, and the surprising thing is that SK Telecom really needs the 2-0 here. You know what I mean? One thing that's lacking right now for them, or one of the things that's lacking is their overall, you know, uh, game score, I guess you could say. And so you want the 2-0 here. You don't want the 2-1. Right. Well, Maokai, again with the sapling stack inside the Raptor Pit, so he will hit that faster level two against Kuve. Bang and Pickaboo. Just gonna go ahead and farm it up. Well, yep. Pull off the wave here. And Nami can. Well, that was a really bad P bomb. <laughs> oh, well. You'll get him anyway. 
And Bliss putting down some early harass. Kube is going to get a little bit of the worst end of a trade at level two as Marin goes in with the sapling in the twisted advance. Otherwise, we should see a lot of patient farming right here. Bengi clears half his jungle and we'll go back. Yeah, not a huge amount of action early on. No little level two gank tricks from this time from Eve. Not really a possibility of getting a kill. So he'll yeah. do the more normal jungle path, picking up the red buff. Bengi with the trailblazer. Oh, Marin. Getting a bit aggressive going in with the twisted advance. But that's the thing, is that Kube does have that magic damage shield. So that's yeah. this lane is quite good for Kasten. Because he can just Q and then walk up and melee minions what's for the CS. What's twisted about that advance exactly? It's the roots maybe that are implied to be twisted? I guess. I mean Maokai is kind of a he's kind of a tree, a natural thing twisted by magic. I suppose there is that. So when he moves forward it is in a twisted manner, I guess. But there we go. Yeah. Nailed it. it out. Thank you, Lore. <laughs> Hooray. Hooray, Lore. Well, Fury's gonna have to do a bit of farming under turret. Blue and Bang actually managing to push this lane up. Yeah, they did get that little bit of a level advantage thanks to yeah. that wave being pushed into their tower so quickly early on. Yep. And they were able to farm up safely, deny a few of those creeps, and so they do miss out on some of the harassment by Fury and Rain. I mean, the, the interesting thing with the Nami Jana matchup is that you can tie colors blessing yourself and poke whoever the shield's not on. And then if you get poked a little bit, you just heal. Kuve quite low right there. Marn doesn't have any mana to follow up this play, however. Bengi not going to look for that gank. Instead, heading back to his own jungle. Get some good deep wards in, though. That play by Bengi, like a lot better timing on his wards than we saw last game where he was living a bit dangerously. Instead, right there, having both his mid and top pushed up. And since Eve did start on blue side and then had moved down to his red side jungle, very safe, deep vision, and now he will have a very good idea about where Eve is on the map. Yep. He knows. Oh, Bengi going in on the blitz. There's a nice oh. amount of damage. They pop that passive. Bengi locked up by the W, though. Yeah, nice little bit of poke right there. That's just good for re relieving some pressure from yeah. Easy Hoon. You can see Easy Hoon did take the heal this game. We'll as a precautionary measure against LeBlanc all ends. We'll see if Eve can maybe make a playoff. This doesn't look like he really wants to try right now. Well, Easy Hoon really wants to recall as well, get that tier as early as possible. Yep. You know, Danger is Bengi's middle name. <laughs> Bengi Danger Telecom <laughs> his full name. Well, he has been living dangerously it's in true. general these days, finding some yeah. very odd times to war, and sometimes fatally strange. International, well, not really international, a national man of mystery. Oh, he's competed plenty of times internationally, Doan. I suppose, but he's not like, you know, he didn't go to another country to play, per se, on a different team, you know? On a different team? Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, I'm saying he didn't leave Korea <laughs> and go join a Chinese team like everybody else. <laughs> he's still here. Yeah. Say so. I suppose this play is not very well. Sometimes it's mysterious, but not really in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he does have that. <laughs> well, see, I don't want to be an international man of mystery. I'm, I'm fine with just being an international man of ambiguity. I don't. Well, you're not, not very. You're not very mysterious on camera all the time. I'm you not know that hardcore. Yeah. That's true. Thank you. Coming around, just clearing out some wards in the mid lane for Easy Hoon. And this will be another game where SK Telecom is just going to want to stack up. Very similar situation. It's just, I mean, oh, nice poke. Marin will want to get that Rod of Ages. We've got to see that tier. Yep. Start leveling yeah. up, and, and it should just be another timing game for SK Telecom. They did hit the timing very well in the last game. Even after they gave up a 21 minute Baron, they still closed the game in 32 minutes. So SKT, team that really knows when to fight, when oh. they're strong, and also able to close games very decisively. That's one thing that they've always done, that SK Telecom K has always done, and this team you know, still does, is that there's a point in the game where they'll be like, all right, we got this advantage, we know how to 
uh, you know, use it perfectly, and they can really close faster than a lot of other teams. They've had their missteps, but that's one thing that SK Telecom has never really lost. Right, and the, o the only problems they had last game were foolishly giving up some objectives early on. So trying to fight a little bit too early, a bit of overconfidence, but once they hit that power spike, it was pretty smooth sailing from that point forward. In this game, SK Telecom, they, they're just getting down vision. Uh, Bengi not really going for the ganks. I mean, Samsung a little bit too mobile in all lanes effectively. Good disengage and bot as well. So instead, what we see Bengi doing this game is just providing vision in both sides of the jungle. I mean, there's some more deep wards coming in from Pickaboo. They've got, they've had great knowledge of where Eve is this entire game so far. And as yeah. long as they can prevent their lanes from getting ganked, they will be safely able to scale. Oh, Janna's walking right into a gank. Oh, Aqua Prison, Wraith in big, big trouble. There's the exhaust going down on two people, actually. Wraith trying to get away. There's a flash. Nice whirlwind, and he makes it out. Summoners used on both sides, but more importantly, Wraith having to burn his flash there. Great reaction from Easy Hoon as well. Gets yeah. into the brush right behind the red buff, prevents them from following up, and then comes down to help Pickaboo and Bengi get out of the jungle. Good ward timing. And yeah, SK Telecom game. just looking really good this game, actually. Oh, what a great amount of poke here, actually, for Bengi. That's perfect, because right after this blue buff, I feel like they can go for Dragon here. Yeah, they? they absolutely can. Yeah. Transition immediately into a Dragon right here. You can see Marin is just waiting in the top fountain right now to see if he needs to use Teleport. They may be looking at a dive. They have plenty of wards. Here we go, dive incoming. Yep, that's right, Teleport. Marin trying to come in from behind for the flank. Eve is there as well, and they're just going to scare him away, so this will end up being a dragon for SK Telecom. Nice use of teleport, though. Might as yep. well see if you can get that advantage. Eve was there, so they probably wouldn't have dove anyway, but now they can get a tower and possibly the dragon as well. Yep. Marin delayed Whoa. the recalls. Fantastic. Oh, beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, I agree. Beautifully done by Marin. Only one word can start to describe that. It's apparently beautiful. <laughs> really nice. And so now they get the tower, and they're going to get the dragon. No way that Fury can recall before this wow. actually goes down. Oh, yeah. they're not going to go for the dragon. Huh, now that's a bit surprising. I mean, Eve is there. His summoners are up, I suppose. Maybe they think it's a little bit more, uh, you know, too dangerous, but yeah, I feel like they could have just rotated around for that dragon too. Huh. I guess they were a bit con uh, they were a bit concerned about the mid lane it right is a there. a little early, too. Uh, being pushed up. Yeah. Uh, Kuve, of course, the teleport, but Kuve going for that scaling Rod of Ages as well. So, I don't know. Think it now there wasn't a threat of Samsung taking it right there either yeah. because of the recall timing from Fury. So I suppose that is the safest possible play. Take the one advantage and still be confident that you're going to be able to get this dragon because the, with the bot lane out, you could just push it up, yeah. get you know, that control, and then take it perhaps slightly more safely in a few minutes. I, I am happy to see SKT played out like that, actually, because, again, you know, it's so important that they get the 2v2 and not risk the 2v1 here. Again, you know, this is this may seem one-sided, but this is actually a very big match for SKT in my mind in that they need to prove that they're still a really, really good team. As, as weird as that sounds, they have not had the best season so far, and if they can get a, a big win, a big convincing win over Samsung, I think that does help. Yeah, they really, and the 2-0, very important for them as well, like yeah. you were saying, having that a little bit of a differential in the point standings could affect their fortune later on the in fans. this spring season. And there we go. The fans need a 2-0. The fans need a 2-0. I need a 2-0. I need this to be a 2-0, Monty. I go home and I see my SK Telecom <laughs> mug, and like a single <laughs> tear comes down my cheek. And I see like the little crack in my handle, and I'm like, yeah, that really does kind of say it all right now, doesn't it? Well, SK Telecom is getting all the tears in this series I so guess far. So. <laughs> The good kind, though. The good kind. The That's kind right. that you want. The ones that you fill with the real tears of your victims. <laughs> That's right. Bang has managed to get a CS lead. You know, I mean, it was not the most favorable 2v2 for SK Telcom, but they played it out really well. And Bengi really has done a good job this game. After some very weird attempts at ganks, uh, unnecessarily showing himself on the map, risky warding attempts, he has largely shut down Eve's ability to gank this game just through a superior vision control. So this yeah. is a big step up from the last match we saw. And I think this is Bengi at his best. You know, he doesn't have to be, Bengi doesn't have to be a star player on this team, especially with 
the Faker and Marin combo. If he provides Faker and Marin enough vision and can just effectively counter gank or alert his solo lanes to where their jungler is, he could just be a role player on this team. And I think that his over commitment to ganking has really been his downfall, giving up an unnecessarily large number of kills. Yeah. Well, I agree. I mean, and you see teams like that. There's been examples as well in the past. You know, Watch on Najin's sword, Todd Templar on, on uh, CJ Frost. You have these junglers that just do their role. They do it well. They aren't flashy or anything like that, but they're kind of where they need to be, and they're getting the vision they need to get. Yeah. So I think that this is a big improvement in a style that suits Bengi a, a bit better than what we've seen him attempt to do in the past few weeks. Oh, yeah. I, I really feel like the only champion he's been able to be successfully aggressive on his body. And I feel like that was kind of a short-lived thing. That was a long time ago as well. That was indeed. That was season three worlds around that time. Kuvay just taking a bit more harassment damage here from Marin, who is he's arcane smashing him very close to his tower. Yeah. Smashing. All right. So Bengi just spending most of his time in the river right now, seeing what he can see on that side of the map. Eve and Wraith going in All for right. a dragon. You know, uh, SKT knows about this. Now they do for they sure. They have no teleport, though. Ah, uh, yeah. It looks like they got a turret in the meantime. That's good enough. Pickaboo really harassing hard. There's the Aqua Prism. The spike comes through anyway. And that's going to be a dragon for Samsung Galaxy. But again, during that, SK Telecom gets top turret. So two towers down now for SKT. They're going to feel comfortable, absolutely fine with that trade. Not really a big deal. Uh, Kuve was holding back, waiting to use TP if necessary. So SKT playing the, the smart game here, not really. Oh, come oh. on, come on, Easy Who. Well, they call him Easy Who, not Easy Who. <laughs> That was terrible. That I'm, was real bad. I hope this is a 2-0 now, <laughs> for everyone's sake. <laughs> oh, Fury takes advantage. There's a tidal wave. He flashes. He still gets knocked up, but smart not to go that far, especially when there's a teleport coming in for Kube. Bang, Valkyrie's away. That costs twice as much mana now, Bang. Look out. Looks like he'll still escape. Yeah, it gets out of the way just fine. Bengi is there just in case they follow up in the right place. Can they save this tower, however? No mana oh, on this Corky. They're going to turn around. There's the teleport coming in. Bliss. Wow, really getting himself poked out hard. Not sure what he was really trying to accomplish there. Marn with the teleport, though, helps SK Telecom save that bottom turret. Yeah, good teleport. Questionable attempt at an engage from Bliss right there. Three people going in, even yeah. without any mana on Corky. Still the danger of getting CC'd. And a flash down now. For Samsung's mid laner. There is the Triforce for Corky, so uh, between that and Easy Hoon's uh, Mura Mana, or Mana Mune rather, they're getting pretty close to a nice power spike there. Yeah. Marin already with that Rod of Ages is doing fine himself. So now for Samsung, it's it's all about getting in that back line. They find themselves with a little bit of a deficit yep. after losing a couple towers early, and here we go. Everybody's just going to pile into the mid lane right now for SK Telecom and try and take down this last outer. Makes sense. Rotate away. Oh, Bliss uses that W. Oh, nice poke. They nearly take out Bliss right there. Between the Shock Blast and the Corky Rockets. Wow. Bliss is not playing LeBlanc particularly well this game. He's yeah. eating a lot of poke. He doesn't seem to know his limits as he went in under that tower and then had to get out nearly immediately oh, using his flash. Or the ward, rather. Right, here we go. Ah, there we go. Mid lane should be going down soon. Not, not Chase is actually backing off right there. Well, it's huh. just a it's a war of a poke attrition at this point. Deep, deep wards in from SKT. Their vision of this game has been absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I mean, look at that. They pretty much have control over the entire enemy jungle. Very little in the top jungle that Samsung can feel comfortable walking through. Yeah, Fury has to go the long, long way around right now. Pickaboo oh and Bang lurking in some brushes. They are not actually going to see Wraith at the moment. And they will back off and clear out a pink ward and try. All right, well, Samsung doing a okay job of trying to, oh, lots of damage on the easy one. Trying to reclaim that vision in their jungle. They get some of it. 
Easy Hoon with that Hex Drinker, though, so he has itemized to at least survive the Blanc Burst a little bit better. Yep. Actually surprised that SKT backed off so quickly right there. Well, he seemed to just be playing it really safe. Wow, Bang gets knocked up. What in the world? Bang has to Valkyrie go off the flash. But look at that first blood for Eve as he follows that one through. Bang. I don't know if he was like tabbed out browsing Reddit or what was going on <laughs> there, man, but that was not good. I don't know why he was in that brush, which yeah. definitely had the potential to be warded right there. Made it quite an easy kill, actually. Yeah, and now just, they're going to lose their bottom tier one. Could have been sitting back protecting that. Looks like we will see a tower trade, though. Marin providing that tanky front line in the mid lane. Kuve maybe coming in. He has to be very careful. Oh, Marin taking a lot of damage. Goes in with the Twisted Vets. That is dangerous. Bliss takes a lot of damage. Wraith is there. They get the knock up onto a couple of them. Kuve no comes mana. in. He gets knocked up by that tidal wave. You're right, though. No mana. They can't really follow this up. Dragging up at about a minute 30. That turret practically dead. 23 health remaining. Yeah, throughout that skirmish as well, they were able to put the necessary damage down on this tower, and now with a minute up for Dragon, SKT should be able just to push up. Yep, one auto. Do it. Into the mid lane and start really taking control. Having that mid lane turret ups for them will give them a large advantage when they decide to go for this Dragon. Easy Hoon sticking around the mid lane for the moment. Still not a lot of armor penetration because he had to go for that Hex Drinker. So he won't be hitting quite so hard with that those long range shock blasts. I suppose. He's going to go back right now. Have, there's plenty of time. Ooh, Last Whisper. Yeah, so had a lot of money right there, immediately building the Last Whisper straight out of the long sword. That's yeah. going to change things. That's going to change things significantly. No. Right here. Bang? In, oh, Bang actually going for Vamp over. I was going to say, yeah. I don't think, I think he should just go for Sork Shoes right now. I realize that he is worried a little bit about these assassins and maybe wanting a little bit more sustain. But um, just the Sork Shoes right now should be good enough, especially with the rest of his team to deal with this. Marin going for the Glacial Shroud. Really think that a Cowl would be better in this situation. Of course, Fury is yeah. going to be a threat with the Infinity Edge. Oh, here we go, there's the engage. Mankey comes in, doesn't get any knockups. Nice response, Whirlwind from Wraith. And it's a battle over the red buff, and it looks like SK Telecom will get it. A little bit of poke coming in onto Eve. Mankey, whoa, Mankey just walks in and dies. Eve kicking easy back, now SKT could All be right. in a bit of trouble. Marin is down there. Bank loading some damage on with that Gatling gun. Again, Wraith disengaging with the Whirlwind, but Marin chasing, can he get close enough? Not quite. That Glacial Shroud coming in handy right there, but Ben getting poked. Marin has to go back in, pops his ultimate. Kuve taking a lot of damage, force use that flash. There's the tidal wave, everybody knocked up there. And Dragon's they, back. Yeah, they probably shouldn't go for this Dragon right now. They just need to control it. Lots of recalls coming in from Samsung. I don't know what Bengi was really doing there, just kind of walked into the enemy team. Yeah, didn't even trigger his ult before he yeah. went down. Dragon will be attempted here by SK Telecom. Looks like oh, they should they. be able to get it. Bliss. Seeing if he can get in on the periphery, but he's not. Oh, the five right much. there. That's okay. Oh, he just face planted oh. into a wall right there, actually. <laughs> whoops. Messed up his W. W stands for wall in that case, <laughs> I guess. And whoops. Let's take a look at this again. Oh, I mean, sick plays by Becky. <laughs> just gets bursted down wow. quite simply by the LeBlanc damage. Could have at least ulted. If he had ulted right there and bottled everybody from Samsung up, they could have gotten some really damaging poke down from Bang and Easy, who instead dies without doing much of anything. Yeah. Well, literally doing nothing. And you can see, though, how great tanky tidal Martin wave is already though. getting. Yeah, that is a good tidal wave. Again, you know, the Nami's for the disengage. Works out well. Yeah, I mean, Farin. With only that Glacial Shroud already getting really hard to kill, as we saw in that last fight. Going in onto Kuve, Wraith is there. Actually, everybody's there. SK Telecom coming in. Can they make a play here? No uh, Tidal Wave or anything like that. They force a flash out of Wraith, though. Marin's been great in this series so far. His positioning yeah. has been excellent. His teleport's on point. And he's been doing very nice work in terms of zoning, which is great to see from Marin, who we know mostly as a more carry-oriented top laner, but hasn't had the same effect on team fights as a zone player like Shy. Yeah, that said, SK Telecom still losing their mid turret there. 
a quick rotation from Samsung. Bliss and Fury in kind of an awkward spot right now. Bliss goes in to try to get the pick onto Pickaboo, but it does not work. And Zed just takes a bunch of damage right there. Yeah. SKT, will they actually try and get some damage down onto a tier two in this situation? Still some deep wards. That pink ward has been in the back of Samsung's jungle for quite a long time now. Yep. Oh, well, Pickaboo is very close to getting his McHales as well, and once that gets picked up, the chains from Bliss are just not going to really be a problem for SKT. So, again, you know, as time goes on, you see SK Telecom really setting up a team that's going to be very hard to fight for Samsung. Right, and Samsung has to be... They have to control vision here, and they have to get those flanks, because if they engage yep. SKT right. head-on, that tidal wave is going to buy Bang and Easy Hoon on a ton of time just to push out, put out damage. And nobody on Samsung too particularly tanky. Nice job by Samsung just to take out the last remaining tier one turret and even up that turret score. Only 400 gold behind for Samsung at the moment. And Kube getting pretty scary as well. True. So SKT needs to do more especially with this next dragon fight. Well, we'll see. Marin switching back up to that top lane now, and he can be a bit of a split-pushing threat, it looks like. Yeah, he has that Rod of Ages stack up. Finally has the Cowl as well, so he's going to be even more effective yeah. in the next team fight that takes place. Phantom Dancer for Fury. It's like very much prioritizing that item over the static ship even though they don't have the safest wave clear in this game outside of Sivir's Boomerang Blade. You know, it's funny too, because the uh, the only kills in this game go to Samsung, but Marin already with about a 60 CS lead. Yeah, it's absolutely massive. If you yeah. notice what they've been doing as well, is that Marin has been taking all the empty lane farm so far in this game. He was yeah, just down in the bottom side, and powering him up is going to do them a lot of favors. Uh, we see CS advantages pretty much across the board here for SKT. Yep. And I wonder if we're going to see Bang build into that community edge. So it is going to be going a little bit later. Oh, there's a passive. There's a flash. Get that out of the rocket. Play. Oh. oh! Tries to flash for the rocket. This will flash as well. So they trade flash for flash right there. Probably a little bit more of an advantage for LeBlanc in this scenario just because she has an additional escape tool that is instant. And yep. well, oh, here we go. Home guard teleport. Marin jumps right onto Fury. Everyone coming in. There's the tidal wave. Wraith with the right away to push people back. But this is going to at least, I would imagine, get SKT a turret. Well, maybe not as Samsung comes back up the lane. Bengi right there. Bengi's he needs to come over the wall. He needs to engage. Bang in trouble. He will. Marin will join him. But such good kiting from SK Telecom. They yep. try for the dive. Don't quite get the angle they need. Oh, Bliss with some damage onto Easy Hoon over the wall. Pickaboo dangerously low health at the moment. Got to be careful. Dragging up in about a minute, too. Good counterplay from Samsung. Yeah. Able to get the kick onto Bengi and threaten them enough that they do come back oh, in. Oh, a poor recall snap. location. Yeah, leads. I'm telling you, to man. To Pickaboo's demise as Bliss comes out and snipes him out of the lane. I'm telling you, man, the, the bane of Korean League of Legends players, really awful recall locations. Oh, Let's early see. home guard just to defend this tower from, from uh, Bang yeah. right here. So he's not going to get there in time, it looks like. Oh, although, oh just, just barely. barely. And Ooh. SK Telecom right there, not the greatest side uh, side lane or side minion wave manipulation right there, allowing that large of a wave to develop while they were diving the mid. You usually want to clear that one out first so you don't end up in a situation where there is a counterplay afterwards. Well, they may be giving a dragon over to SK Telecom here as well. Yeah, they trying be. to recall, and SKT kind of slowing those recalls <gasps> so much, oh. and Marin barely doesn't catch him. That would have been... Possibly a dead Bliss without that flash, but either way, it's going to be a dead dragon in SK Telecom's favor. Yes, it will. So, SK Telecom grabs the dragon. But look at this, Samsung. it's going to be a Baron for Samsung. I love this. I, love I don't think it changes. will be a Baron for Samsung. Uh, it's going to no. be an attempt anyway. SKT already immediately reacting. I like the attempt, though. I, I like the, the idea, you know? 
Well, they got to try something at this point because yeah. they know they're in a, si a similar situation to the last game where Marin is getting massive. Yep. And will become pretty much unkillable pretty soon. Mega Marin. Mega Marin. Yep. Mega Marin Maokai. Merci mercilessly massacring the... I don't know if he's going to be mercilessly massacring. More like <laughs> tanking all of the burst damage from... Cassidy and LeBlanc. Mercilessly not being massacred. That's right. Samsung. I don't know. Alliteration is challenging. Hey, Gates. There's Gates in this rift. That's right. It's 5.1, guys. Finally. <laughs> Finally. At Finally. long last. We should be moving to 5.2 fairly quickly, though. Yeah, next week should yeah. be when you go over to the new patch. Cross so. your fingers. You never know when it's <laughs> get delayed randomly, apparently. A random, random delay, but... Yep. Should be interesting to hit at that new patch. Yeah. Quite quickly, only a brief, a brief stopover in patch 5.1 before we move right on over to number two. Marin continuing just to devour this farm. Wow, Frozen Heart. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't really feel that one, not, Noah. Not the best item against non-auto attacking AP heavy teams. Yeah, I mean it's good against one person on their team, but that's uh. That's only one out of five. Right, plus with the two kills as well. So I guess he's just, he's comfortable with the fact that the his ultimate in that 20% damage reduction will in fact be enough to allow him to weather the storm with just his HP and his cowl. It's not terrible. Well, once he finishes Spirit Visage, he should be in a little bit better shape, I, I guess. But, and they also do have the Aegis on Mengi, I just noticed too, so. Yeah, he'll probably go Veil, I would assume, but yeah. We'll see what that item ends up being. Uh, that's probably right. So, but in the meantime, Marin just continues to push the waves forward. Nobody can really deal with him right now. This is going to try. Yep, that's pretty much what I expected. Uh, he does have the stacks now, fully stacked up on that Rod of Ages. Yep. Is ever going to talk to us while she takes a Shock Blast with her Spell Shield? He's like, ow, oh, that really hurt. Not. Nah. It's very 90s in that Whoa, way. Oh, Bengi actually stealing that one away. And now here comes the pressure. SK Telecom moving in with the minion wave to the bottom side. All that poke from SK Telecom. But they're actually not going to push it. Instead, they want to get control over that Baron. Oh. Kuve looking to dispatch this tower in the bottom lane. Now, Marin, I don't think, is going to get there in time to. Stop yes, this. home guard. Oh, yeah, maybe he will. That turret's so low, though. I'm watching the minimap. Yeah, it looks like he'll get there in time. The minion wave pushing out just when Marin needed it to. Yeah, he's got the AoE as well. Easily able to take down this minion wave. And oh, yeah. AO easily. Okay. It's more dancing around. SK Telecom playing pretty passive this game so far, just waiting for. Samsung to make a mistake. Low kill game. Well, I mean, the thing is, is against a team like Samsung, you know, they don't have that veteran status. These guys are, you know, new to playing at the professional level, except for uh, Fury and Rain, and so he probably will make a mistake. Bang, though. Oh, boy, there's the output from Shiver. Oh, Bang. Yeah, he'll get away. Wow, that was really wow. nicely played by Bang. Nice no, kidding. dodge on this kill shots. Able. Oh, yeah, teleport here comes Marin. Marin. No more Sivirol. Coming in for the flank. He's going to come from behind. Doesn't quite get the hit on Marin. There goes the tidal wave. The lockup rate. There's a nice Aqua Prison. Easy kill there. Marin just not taking a lot of damage from the Samsung team. Bliss hiding out in his jungle. But SK Telecom, they could start maybe thinking about baiting a Baron here after this pressure on the mid lane ends. We'll see if they can get the turret. Well, there's LeBlanc coming around Whoa. the side. Doesn't take out Pikaboo. And now Bliss is going to be on the run. Eating a couple rockets right there, but that yeah, does allow too. Samsung to clear out the mid lane. And that was a great counterplay from SKT. You see, Bang doesn't have to use really anything at all, except for heal in order to escape that bait. Neatly dodging a lot of those skill shots. Gets out with the acceleration gate, and with the Sivir ult down, Marin making the teleport flank play. And coming in to take out Wraith for SK Telecom's first kill of the game. It was yeah. very nicely done. Oh, we see Fury uh, going with that Phantom Dancer as well, too. So I think a lot of people are going to be 
getting that rather than the static ship at this point, it looks like, just to kind of even out the uh, crit percentage that was lost on the IE. Yeah, very important to late game damage output. Yep. Bengi also going for the Aegis this game, fast Aegis from him, and probably be building into that locket now, so that will be very effective for SK Telecom against these double AP assassins. Yeah, definitely. Help keep Pickaboo alive, oh, certainly. Easy Hoon's had his Murrow mana now for a, a little bit, and he's got that Brutalizer on top of him, as well, too, so he's going to start to really be hitting hard with those Shock Blasts. Bliss takes some damage. Fury as well, or Bang, rather, as well. And Bliss really far away. Yeah. He has that mobility, but very far away from Azonius oh, at this point. It's Dragon time. And SK Telecom, they're just going to take Baron in response, it looks like. Oh! But Samsung, they turn around on it. Now, will SK bait this, or will they just Fury's go for gonna it? Fury's going to try and solo it. I don't know if this is a good idea from Fury. They don't have the Sivir ult Ooh, there in boy. order to engage. He's coming now, and they're not going to have an AD carry while well, they're going to try to stop this Baron. SK Telecom going for it. Bliss and Eve in the back of the pit. Here they come. Eve coming in. A lot of damage onto Bengi. They nearly take him out. The zone is used by Kube. There's that tidal wave going through. Doesn't really hit anyone. Bengi forced to recall, so they did prevent the Baron. But can they get anything out of this? Maybe a mid-tier two? Okay, they're going to run for it right now. Three members in the mid lane, and now SK Telecom coming around to get them from behind. Bengi oh boy. roaring up the mid lane. Are they actually going to catch anybody, though? They are so mobile. Uh, Marin's Sivir no really ult. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Marin's uh -oh. trying. Uh -oh. Fury. Yeah, again, no ult. He's got his flash. He's got his heal. Kuve still might be boxed in here by the wall. Marin doesn't want to use his W because of spell shield. So This is the craziest chase I've seen in a long time. Wow, Bliss did a great job in that last fight, though, of poking Benki yeah. out very quickly with the help of Kuve. Marin's still looking for something, but it looks like, oh. in the end, that dragon is SK Telecom for the taking. They traded for a tier two in the mid lane. Marin can zone this all day, too, as well. He's not even going to give it a try. And so, third dragon taken now by SK Telecom, and we'll see where they go from here. It looks like they may just want to rotate bot and take this turret. Very Fury there recalling. Has to be careful, very concerned about me. <laughs> very concerned about the dive. Yep. And if I ever get mystery gifted that skin, I'm just going to uninstall. Like, no. <laughs> like, email Riot, can you take the skin back, please? Oh boy, now I'm going to start giving you mystery gifts. Uh, Ooh, sweet. This might work out well. <laughs> we'll see. I mystery champion gifted my friend the other day and ended up giving him Nara. That was a pretty sweet pickup. Now you can dominate the top lane with your friend, is that right? That's right. Well, he'll be doing the dominating in the top lane. I will dominate the bottom lane. Ooh, interesting. Bang actually was looking like he was building into Infinity Edge and instead got the Bloodthirster just for that little bit of extra protection. He's he did been, that overshield. He's been a bit worried about that all game. Well, it's, I think, a reasonable fear. <laughs> yeah. A clear and present <laughs> danger. It's true. I would agree. Well, Samsung trying to take a little bit of vision back near the Baron, and they will grab some of it, including the poor Risk. Last Whisper now. Coming in for Bang as well, so he will be very effective against whoever, whomever tries to take him out in the back line. I like that you directed yourself to whomever there. That really shows a <laughs> great uh, conscious care about grammar. <laughs> I appreciate that about you. As an English major, I take these things very seriously. <laughs> well, maybe next time you won't even say who first at all. <laughs> we could only be so lucky. <laughs> all right, well, right. Martin did actually finish the Spirit Visage, going for that extra CDR, I guess, instead. And, uh, of course, that will amp up his healing from his passive in the oh, fight. Oh, Bliss with a lot of damage onto Pickaboo. Gets poked in return, though, but Bliss, I think, really choosing his targets well here. Pickaboo has to yeah. play very careful. Bang. Bang. He's recalling. Bang, Ooh, bang. did so much damage. Okay, Whoa. goodbye, Ray. Even after the flash as well, too, getting that summoner out. Well, very nice. They used a lot of cooldowns to get the damage onto Pickaboo. Couldn't quite kill him, and that allowed Bang to play that engagement much more aggressively than he typically would have been able to. Kuve and Marin both with teleports up, but Kuve having to play defensively right here, taking a lot of trade damage. He doesn't have any MR at the moment. Can SKT 
Bait this oh man, he's just getting schooled by Marin at the moment. Yeah. Marin could even trade turret shots considering how tanky he is. <laughs> SKT Will standing this straight be successful? <laughs> into a ward. Nice. And Kube actually having to recall right now. All right then. They are still in a ward. They're going for it. Samsung coming in from behind. This could be dangerous. Here we go. Teleport coming in. Eve going to come over. Baron still about half out. There's a tidal wave used. Bliss doing some damage. SKT turning things around, though. Getting out there fairly easily. Cassidy trying to poke down Bang, but it's not really working. Fury getting caught up by Marin in a lot of trouble. Goes down to Easy Hoon. And SK Telecom taking that fight. Good response as Samsung tried to stop the Baron, only ended up losing all their damage. And now SKT can just turn right back around and take it. Great turn from SK Telecom. They just yeah. wanted to bait that fight, make sure that Samsung committed because they are so much more powerful at this point in time. Sure, they're that bit of a gold deficit, but there's just not enough damage to deal with the tanks on SKT. Bang, chunking out Bliss early and then finishing up with a flash. Yep. Now it's an easy Baron. SK Telecom really controlling this game right now. And Bang going to devour a the top lane farm in response. So here wow. we go. Everybody coming in. Bliss gets knocked up, actually. And so eats a ton of damage. Can't quite get in. Quite easy for Bliss to flash forward after that. Marin will follow Fury after the flash. Knock him around a little bit with Arcane Smash. Fury not able to do anything at all to this Maokai that is currently past what I like to call the Flame Horizon, <laughs> which is when a top laner gets 100 CS more than their top lane opponent. Then we've entered the Flame Zone. Yes, the Flame CS Horizon. I see. <laughs> there, there we go. Marin has accomplished it. He is massive. So if Marin's taking Kube to school, what kind of school is that? Like forestry school? Or? <laughs> Is he going to be a park ranger? What's going on? The agriculture. Yeah. Future farmers of America. Or anywhere, really, of Korea, I guess. Now with the Abyssal as well, amp up his damage. I thought he'd be going to Veil, but dope Abyssal, just for the quirky poke as well. And considering nobody has MR right now, that is going to be highly effective. Combined with his missiles, Eve opting for a Thorn Mail this game. Yeah. Wow. Right. Ho hoping to draw some autos once he gets into the back line. But, you know, Samsung just really hasn't found the flanks with this composition, and they were forced to fight at that Baron, and Bliss just not respecting the tidal wave, allowing himself to get CC'd when he was trying to get in and poke. All right, well, SKT coming in big time now. They're going to take this turn without any problem. Kube tries to come in first. Keep one pick, getting low. He gets the tidal wave off just in time. That gets them a kill onto Bliss. Easy, finally taken out by E, but return kill comes in double already for Bang and SKT. They back out for now. They could turn again. Wraith alts just barely. Oh, barely he misses Kube alive. standard. Wow, and that's going to be the end of Bangy. SKT has to back off now. Oh, I thought they were going to get the Was he knocked up? I didn't actually see, but... It... I didn't catch it either. I was watching what was happening in the base. We'll check that one out later, but yeah. SKT will immediately turn on to this dragon right here. Take that before there is a chance to respond. In the end, they get the tower, force things through, lose two for two. A dragon turret will be an easy... Shut up, Nami. ...inhibitor to take, and that's the thing is, Samsung, even though they have these late-game assassins, they can't just engage in the front like that, or else they just eat the tidal wave every single time. See right here? And un SKT getting a bit unlucky. One like hit left on this turret. Kube will... Zonia's made that out. Bliss does get into the back line, but there is no follow-up, really. Easy Hoon walks a little bit too far. We're forward right there. Gets kicked by Eve. And now they're been chucked out just a little bit too much. They do. Attempt to leave the base right there, and Bengi, okay, Oops. Bengi just straight up misses it. Kiwi combos, man, they're pretty hard. Good so. joke. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> oh, oh boy, it's the boss fight, and they finally do get Marin, actually. Pickaboo in a bit of trouble as well, uses Tidal Wave. Whoa, that's a double kill for Fury, and that is a dangerous situation now for SK Telecom. Can they save? This tier two turret, they may just have to give this one up. Well, they still have some wave there right here, a little bit of danger from the dive. And, you know, if you're Mara in that situation, you know you have to know how S Samsung plays. They do this nearly every game that they're behind. They will stand in a brush and wait for you. They yep. will stand there for a long, long time. 
and now they're forced on the defensive, and they're going to lose an inhibitor. Wow, so Samsung this? having that brush play really work out for them. They were able to collapse on Marin, and that was a good read by Samsung. Yeah. Marin has been solo farming side lanes this entire game so far. You know, he's been the one where all the empty lane farm is going. That's why he's so gigantic at the moment. Yeah, I gotta say, Samsung is, yeah, they don't seem to be good enough to win matches yet, but they certainly are improving. Well, that, that's just, I mean, they were gonna kill whoever ended up going up into that top side. No wards. Uh, Samsung picked the right brush to camp, and they do end up, thanks to the Silver ult and the mobility of Cassidy and LeBlanc, getting the yeah, kill onto Pickaboo so. as well, and they will actually take the first inhibitor of this game in a bit of a Surprise, Marin is capped out in terms of items now with that Randuins. He is insanely tanky, but he has to be in that team fight situation. Yeah, did end up going for that Spirit Visage as well, and uh, not the Banshees after all. Huh. Yeah, I think he wants the additional sustain via his passive. Right. And also the CDR, so I, I, I'm a sense. bit surprised. I think the Veil would have been a little bit better here, but I understand it's not. Obviously, it's still a perfectly fine buy. No. Fury certainly not lacking in CS or items right now. He has become extremely terrifying. Picking up that Bloodthirster and the uh, Quicksilver Sash as well. Well, it looks more like a Quicksilver headband, really. Not very Sash-esque. You know, when you, when you have the art from that angle, from the down up, it really makes it look more like a headband, doesn't it? It really does. All you have to do is flip that icon upside down and it would look a lot more like a sash. <laughs> Honestly. I totally agree with you, actually. Yeah. Hey, it's Zeke's Herald from Pickaboo. Wow. Huh. Oh, it's good uh, in this it's circumstance. Not, yeah, it's great. It's just not something we see very often. Yeah, really helping out Easy Hoon and Bang. Yeah, it's going to be a lot more uh, attack speed. Here we go. Go for it. It's Marin time with the home guard. Oh, is he actually going to catch this Janna? No, but he, oh boy. he is going to zone him out. Fury can't really contest this red buff right now. All yeah. of SK Telecom piling in to the jump. Oh, 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 oh they, they got found him. him. They got him. Wraith gets the knockup as well, too. They're going to get at least one kill, and this is getting dangerous. Pickaboo throws a ward. Can he catch Eve? Eve running back to his team, but Marin's Marin. right there. Look out. Uh, it was advanced right onto him. He knocked up, of course. Safeguards away. Kicks nice far kick. back. Eve, man, this guy has some mechanics. Still gets knocked up by Bengi. There's a guy that comes up. They get Bengi, though. Wow. Bengi. Oh, Bengi. Bengi Not Bengi, really Bengi. worth it when Lee Sin didn't have an ult anymore oh, to use his ult in that situation to try and lock him down. In fact, they were going to have to retreat. You. Okay. Spell, or are they? Spell shield on the twisted advance. Yep. Marin going in. They do take the inhibitor now. A little Can bit of damage on more. the Kuvay. I don't think so. Yeah, they, they have, they 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 have to back off. Super minions at their Nexus turrets right now. They oh. need to recall. Can Samsung delay? They have a lot of tools to do so. They also want that fifth dragon as well, but they're going to lose this Nexus turret before anything happens here. Fury trying his best to stop these recalls. He, oh, he stops Marin's. Bank does get back. Fury turned around on Marin, pops the ultimate. Easy Hoon, he needs to decide if he's going to help or if he's going to go away. Decides to make a run for it. Bank clearing that up, but not before they lose that Nexus turret. Marin, if Marin goes down, I think Samsung could win this game. Oh boy. He has to be so careful about the damage from Easy Hoon, however. Yes, he does. He still doesn't have a Zonia's Hourglass. Oh my. I think Samsung should consider going after this dragon too if they can. That would well, be they have to fight dragon, it. Presque Telecom, yeah. yeah they, they don't have a choice. They must right, right. fight at this fifth dragon. Okay, well. Or they try and trade it for the Baron. They can attempt that as well. In fact, they're going onto the Baron right now. True enough, Banky needs to be risky. careful. Risky. needs to be careful. Super under. risky from Samsung. Well, I feel this is a bit of an overcommitment. Bliss is there, putting down some damage onto Bengi, but Samsung Bengi has to back off. They cannot do this. This is a desperation move by Samsung. Here we go, SK Telecom coming in. No knockups with the Whirlwind. Bengi jumps in on the ease. A kill already for Bang. Oh, they get Fury right off the bat. Now Eve is going to go down. Baron buff does go to Samsung, but only Kuve and Bliss around to handle that. That Nexus turret a bit low. Bliss, can he backdoor this possibly? Uh, the inhibitor is going to be coming up so. really soon. Marin is already yeah. there. No okay, way that he yeah. can do that. Dragon is up. SK Telecom wants to push down into the mid lane, looks like. You know, is that the best idea, or should they just go take the dragon? What do you think? 
I think they should go take the dragon once this inhibitor comes there out. There are long death timers. Goodbye. They got bliss. That's the game right there. Nobody's stopping them now. Minion waves. There's a little bit of one there. There's enough of one there. Kube taking some damage. And that with that super minion coming in, SKT should be able to end it right here. Yeah. And they will. Nothing, so, nothing really that Samsung can do. Yeah. I, I think that was a very foolish decision. Samsung didn't yeah. have to all in at that Baron. Well, again, you know, lacking some of that late game decision making. But GG, there it is at the end. SK Telecom getting the 2-0. And, you know, despite the 2-0, yes, it was fairly convincing for SK Telecom. But I got to say, I feel like Samsung, I, I feel like that was their best series yet, even yeah, though it they, was a 2-0. They stepped up. They did give. Yeah. They looked better and more cohesive as a team, especially in terms of trading objectives, which has been a weakness for Samsung up until this point. And they managed to take down an inhibitor, SK Telecom, with a mistake by losing Marin in that top side that caused yeah. them to fall behind by an inhibitor. But Marin overall that game was very good. Just that one mistake holding him back. He's been great tonight as a whole, really. Yeah, he really has been a champ in both games. And you know, Faker may have overshadowed him a bit in game number one, but I've got a feeling Marin should get the MVP for game two. Yeah, he played very, very well again. Huge CS advantage, monster tank, great zoning in those team fights. Good teleports as well. He yep. really did a lot to help his team win, corralling a bunch of people at the end by siphoning off Wraith in, and Eve into that brush of the river. Really nicely done, actually. Yeah, I agree. Good split pushing as well. Wow, 459 CS too, so really getting quite a bit of creep score that game. Easy Hoon doing just fine himself. On that Jace, two, one, and eight overall. And Samsung, yeah, it's another loss. Yeah, they're still winless in matches overall. But again, you know, I, I do feel like we're seeing a little bit of improvement, slowly but surely. Their last three games have been much more encouraging than what we yeah. saw previously yeah. in this season. It seems like they're actually trying to, they're actually starting to develop their style to figure out what works for them. Yeah, and I mean, if we look at. Their faces right now, yeah, there's a bit of disappointment, but it doesn't look that bad. They're like, yeah, you know what? Not bad. I mean, they're not just getting not totally bad. blown out anymore, so that's... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it sounds kind of pessimistic when you put it that way, but it is an improvement for this team. So far, I think the, the hardest blow we've seen has still been uh, I am. <laughs> Fortunately for them. Maybe KT. Dodge, no. KT has not been blown out like Dodge and Blue not, out not like I am. I am yeah. 